Hello and welcome to another episode of Makeup of Yarn podcast. My name is Clara, I'm a knitter and knitwear designer based in Moravia and this is my space when I talk about my knitting, my designs and sometimes even about my personal life. So today I'm going to show you just one finished object um, and then I have several whips. Uh, mostly my designs, but one is another designer's pattern and I will show you some yarn which I am going to use um, for my new pattern idea. So, the f I will start with the FOs. Uh, last time I showed you the swatch I made. It was the golden yellowish color and I told you I'm going to knit a um, hat with it. And it's finished and it's currently being test knitted and I'm going to release the pattern at the beginning of uh, December might be the end of November, but I think the beginning of the December is more realistic. So, this is how it turned out. This is the hat. You may recognize the cable pattern. I actually, I really, uh, I can show you how it looks when you put it on. It's, <laughs> well, it's like slouchy. And just have to adjust it a bit. And yeah, this is how it looks when you put it on. And uh, there's not a really stretchy brim. Uh, I actually started with like a one by one ribbing with this cables, like running in the middle. Like, let's start at the beginning. I really thought this would be a really quick project because the swatch was uh, done and I know what needles I need. I did the math, everything. And I started uh, with the brim. Uh, it's a little bottom up. And I, because, you know, there's a gauge difference between stockinette and cable. And with this yarn, it's kind of a big difference. About five stitches per 10 centimeters difference. So I had to calculate how much stitches I need to cast on for the brim and then how much to increase to compensate for the gauge difference. And it was kind of alright, so I just... But in the end, I re the brim about five times, I think. And, I, I, and when I was happy with it, I just in, did the increase row and started with the cable pattern. And as I was knitting these cables, the body of the hat, I realized that this brim is really not working with the pattern because it was too much, it didn't look nice together. So after I finished the uh, crown shaping, I uh, throw a lifeline here and I cut in the fabric. And this is my fourth, third, this is my fourth design and the third time I cut in, <laughs> into the finished object to print it, so I was kind of no, think about is it going to my designs approach to so knit and re knit something? I hope not because it's gonna help. So I cut it off, and what I did is just this I cord edge, it's a seven stitch I cord edge, so it's kind of time consuming, but still, it's just um, a you know, head circumference. So it took me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to finish it, so it's doable, it's not that painful to do it and uh, it's uh, the eye cord uh, edge is like a stretchy so it's like it doesn't feel uncomfortable around the head actually when I was knitting the head it really looked too narrow and too long it's like okay when it's too long I can just rip back and you know do the crash shaping uh, sooner but I was really afraid it won't fit because when I tried it on pre blocking, pre washing, it was really tight. And I do have a small head, like my head circumference is 53 centimeters. I don't know about inches right now, but I, it's extra small, so almost like a teen, <laughs> teen size head. And so, that, okay, let's see. I washed it and blocked it, and now I'm blocking it. It stretches so much, I actually could, it could actually fit. And like M medium size head, <laughs> so 
<laughs> but it, it depends on how much you stretch it. So I just stretch it so uh, to the dimensions uh, of my head, so the final dimensions of uh, this X is uh, extra small size. And uh, I think it turned out really nice. I even like how slouchy it is because mm, usually I don't wear slouchy hats because I think I like I look stupid in them. But actually, after uh, stretching it, so uh, it was it went wider and got shorter. It actually looks really nice, and I really like it. So it's been tested, it, and uh, I think it will be ready in about a month. Uh, the yarn again is uh, Juliet. No, 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 sorry, <laughs> it's Juliet. It's uh, Ulisse by Dredum Natura. Uh, this uh, colorway is called. I don't speak French, uh, which I say in uh, every video, I think, but I think it's a Jeanette. It's called. Uh, it is uh, written G E N E T. And I will put all the information you need in the description box down below, so we can read it there. And uh, it's the same um, yarn I used um, for the meander hat, just different colorway. And it's a French, marine, French and Portuguese merino mix. It's really nice to work with, uh, perfect for cables. Um, not, uh, I say. Like, I wouldn't say it's price, I think the price is appropriate for the quality of the yarn, but yes, it's kind of pricier yarn for some. So, but I totally recommend this this brand in the yarn. The yarns are great. So, this is the... Oh, I, I didn't mention the name. <laughs> uh, the name of this pattern is Zolotaya. Uh, why did I say it with English accent? I don't know. Zolotaya. Uh, Zolotaya means uh, golden in Russian. Because I just, you know, exude the color. <laughs> so I call it Zalutaya. Um, and why Russian? Maybe you don't know this, but uh, half my family is Russian. Specifically, my husband's Russian, so, and my kids are half Russian, half Czech. So, uh, and we speak Czech and Russian in our household, and kind of, you know, we do live the Czech Russian culture here. Uh, and I really loved uh, how it sounds in Russian. In Czech it would be Zlata. And I just think that Zlataya is kind of, you know, cuter, <laughs> cuter, uh, cuter. So it sounds, sounds cuter, but let's, let's keep it. It is. So, this is one thing. Another thing uh, is that uh, I'm wearing my Ruska pullover and you heard a lot about it in the previous episode, so I won't repeat myself, but it's finally being test knitted. I finished the pattern uh, and it's being test knitted. Uh, there are nine sizes, so the bust circumference ranges from 70, the finished bust, from uh, 85 centimeters to 160. Five approximately. I think in inches it's about 30 to 65 inches. So I'm trying to be size inclusive uh, when I'm designing. So uh, at least a size 8 and 9 are really for busty ladies and um, uh, people uh, with not like regular shapes. And I still need testers for some sizes. So if you'd like to test this pattern, um, you can find the application, the link to the application form in the um, description box. And you need a worsted to iron weight yarn. Um, and the deadline is the end of this year, but you don't need to finish the whole sweater. Basically, the construction is that you knit the sleeve, you knit the yoke, you knit um, that sleeve. Oh, the other way around. I mean, you start on the left and you end on the right, uh, right sleeve. And then you pick up the stitchings alongside this cable and knit the body. And the requirements are to knit um, the left sleeve, the yoke, two inches of or five centimeters of this sweater. So just, you know, we need to connect it and knit a few. And then to knit about, again, five centimeters to two inches of the body. So just because I need to know how it fits, um, you know, around the shoulders 
and you know the body length is adjustable so even if you want to edit it under your bust you can stop there so uh you don't need you don't need to need the whole sweater and um what else hmm. i'm not sure i wanted to say something <laughs> okay so and um so the test the deadline for the test is the end of this year so i will publish this pattern uh somewhere in the first half of january i hope um yes so this is to this weather um and uh now we'll start with my whips so the one i'm really i will start with this one so i already showed you uh this was the last time i don't but well, i do have like a provisional name for it which is kastania uh, sweater and kastanje means just not in English. Last time I was in, I couldn't remember the English version. And kastanje is a Portuguese word for a chestnut, and it's also the name of the yarn. Like obviously, it's a really nice uh, chestnut color, and um, it's a provisional name. And I asked last time if you have suggestions, so uh, I got one. Uh, I was a spare coin sweater or something like that you can find the explanation actually in the comment section of my uh, previous podcast and i actually kind of like it because this design uh, the or one of my followers suggested this oh okay yeah everywhere uh, because this design contains pockets and pockets for you know you can put a spare coin in it so it's a turtleneck construction uh, you work some short rows to, uh, you know, to, to make it, um, you know, higher at the back. The construction is raglan, and then you have the pockets, and the pockets are kind of hidden in the ribbon. And uh, <laughs> this one is, this one is still not work because I need to uh, record the tutorial for it on how to pick up the stitches, which I'm going to do after I record this video. And so, this is the pocket, and it looks kind of bulky but it's just because um, it's not uh, uh, washed and blocked so after blocking it will kind of you know it will stretch and it wouldn't be that bulky and um, yes and the pocket looks like this so it's a really, it's not attached to the ribbing it's like you know a real pocket well, yeah, that's when it's real pockets like it just have two two sides you can just here yeah, and we will show it to you. <laughs> so and it's kind of long, so it's uh, reaches my thighs because I really wanted a long sweater, and I already finished one sleeve, and I'm about to finish the second one. And I really need to finish it like in one week because I'm going to the mountains with my kids. And uh, it's getting really, really cold in the Czech Republic and I really want to wear this. Uh, because it's uh, this yarn is really rustic, really warm. It's... Um, I can say it's called Ways Kestanje. And the uh, base is called uh, Badana. It's from the Trasaria Rosa Pomar. Uh, brand and uh, it's a pure Portuguese wool. Well, it's really similar to Icelandic Latlogi and definitely not for sensitive people because it's kind of toothy. I don't mind. I love rustic <laughs> rustic woods. So rustic yarns. So this is it. Uh, this is how the raglan looks. It's purl one knit one through the back loop. And then purl one again. So it kind of creates quite a nice line. And uh, I'm so I'm going to finish it in one week, I hope. And uh, I also want to uh, finish the, this pattern so uh, really soon. So about uh, in about a month, I think at uh, the end of November, uh, I will be calling for test centers for this weather. So if something you'd like to test knit, uh, stay tuned and you can follow me here or on Instagram. I actually created a Facebook page 
um, because I know many people don't want to use Instagram or just don't have an Instagram account. So I created a Facebook page. It's called Clara Pushin Knitwear Design. And I post the same things I post on Instagram, I post on this Facebook page. So there's a place where you can uh, find out about test calls and uh, what I'm designing. And also I launched my website. I think I talked about it last time, I'm not sure if it was, oh, it was ready, <laughs> it was ready. So it's, uh, uh, the website is clarapushin.com. And uh, one uh, thing I added to the page is, uh, because with designing, I kind of, you know, um, started to explore the world of tech editing. Of course, I have an, I have tech editor for my, um, uh, for my patterns because you can't really tech edit your own patterns because you just don't see the mistakes. But I kind of do the tech editing uh, of my own patterns, but then because you just need to check everything. And then I send it to uh, my lovely editor, Kate. But um, I was like, this is something I really love to do. I, I love math, I love tables, uh, working with spreadsheets and <laughs> this kind of thing. So I uh, added a section to my web page uh, that I want to offer and I'm offering tech editing services. So if you are a designer or think about being a designer or you're working on first design and need the tech editor, you can reach out to me and I can even uh, do schematics. This is something I, I, I didn't know I could do. Oh, so this is super hard. I've never worked with a vector graphic editor, but I found uh, like a free software called Inkspace and I tried it and I actually created uh, schematics for a couple over in about an hour. It's like, okay, that's not that hard. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, I like the process of creating it and learning it. And I have a lot of things to learn uh, with this uh, graphic uh, software, but I really like it. So I even uh, yesterday I created schematics for me and the rest. And so I will send an update of the pattern. Uh, I also added some more uh, measurements uh, because there was no information about the armhole depth uh, with uh, in the meander west pattern so i calculated that added that so if you bought a pattern i will send uh, an update to you and i also added a modification because some of the people uh, you know the meander west it has kind of uh, the ribbing is split is split split it i'm not sure <laughs> split it. and um it's really long, so it's kind of extravagant design a little bit, I think. And some of the testers just they didn't just put it um, right away, or they just knit it in the round. So I just added the information how to knit the ribbing in the round. I know it's very simple; I think everyone could figure it out. But um, maybe there's a you know, total beginner and uh, they want to knit my pattern and had no idea how to turn the uh, ribbing work flat into ribbing work in the round. So I added that. So this is Kastania or spare coins with her. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, this is it. Okay. I can put it somewhere here. Another whip is actually connected to the meander west and it's a meander sweater because a lot of people uh like wrote to me i don't like to i don't wear west but i really like this one i want to knit it or i this is lovely but i would love to you know knit a sweater design with this pattern so i decided to turn the meander west into meander sweater and uh, it won't be completely identical, like when you look at the Van der West and just add sleeves, no. And there are some changes. And the biggest change is that there uh, won't be a V-neck, it'll be a crew neck sweater. And I already have the yoke finished. So, it will look like this.
uh, isn't he? There's no. Uh, it's not the the. I don't know. Uh, the neck is not finished yet. I have to uh, record a tutorial for it. But uh, there will be an I chord edge as well because it will mimic the double knit edge on the on the west. And the sweater will have a boxy shape. And this is armholes, but I will probably add a uh, short row shaping uh, for the sleeves so they won't be like you know like straight. They won't be like straight from the body, but I will make short row shaping so it it will knit this part of the sleeve and then it goes down. And why is it so? Because it's kind of you know, for example, this is really boxy. This is just uh, regular boxy sweater. And when you, you know, when you, when you, when you have your arm like that, you can see there is this right angle in the fabric. Yeah. And it's kind of, when you have your arms at your body, there is this extra fabric. And it doesn't really bothers me because I wear size two, but when you have like size seven, I think there will be a lot of fabric at your underarm and it might not be comfortable. Uh, in this construction, it's not really possible to... Well, it actually might be possible. It will be really, really hard to figure it out. And I just, I wanted to leave this design as it is. Pure boxy sweater. But and this is a more traditional design when you knit the body first and then the sleeve. So it's really easy to add the shoulder shaping to create a sleeve cap and then the sleeve. So, the pattern at the front is the same as uh, for the meander rest. And what's different is that this, these cables, these four or two by two cables, go around the, the neck and then they go down. So, actually, when you compare it, this is the same as this. But there, there's just there's no meander cables, no meander pattern, just those two by two cables, which uh, will go down to the ribbing. So that's a uh, modification I made. Uh, uh, do you work uh, obviously it's work flat, and once you join uh, for the underarms, you work in a round, and uh, there is this almost invisible seam. Here at the shoulders, and again, uh, it's kind of you pick up stitches even for this cable, and I think it's almost invisible how the cables continue, and that you actually picked up stitches for it right here. I, I need to record a tutorial how, on how to do it um, because I kind of had to figure it out. I did it about four times until it really looked good and it really you know made sense and. I am not afraid I forget it already, so I have to, you know, um, I have to remember it. And but I, I'm definitely going to uh, record a tutorial so everyone can knit it, because I think I can explain it in words. But when you see it, it's just you know, it's easier to to knit it from a video tutorial than from written instructions. So this is going to be a meander sweater. Some of you asked me if I can add the crew neck option to the meander rest. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do it because um, there's a lot of math involved. Another tech editing uh, would be necessary, uh, which, by the way, costs a lot of money. So I'm not. I don't think so. But. Um, I have another. I want to uh, design another vest. It will be crew neck vest with the. And I want to. Um, it will be the construction will be quite similar to the under vest. It will be double knit edges, uh, but there will be crew neck instead of V neck and um, some other cable pattern at the front. So I think it will be a nice alternative to the under vest. And now, this is my last whip. That's not my pattern. I bought this pattern uh, more than a year ago because I wanted to knit my husband a sweater. 
and uh, this um, design is called cobblestone and I forgot the designer's name but I will put it down below and um, I said this sweater about a year ago because I, I already knitted two sweaters for my husband um, well, the first one was uh, in the with Little Lopi, and it was too scratchy for him. So, and he doesn't wear it, or didn't wear it, and I ripped back and uh, knit to myself sweater with the yarn. And the next sweater I knitted him was last year. It should be for Christmas. It was the... oh, I forgot the name. But I talked about it in one of my episodes. And I kind of, you know, I, I measured him and I picked a good size, I think, but someone, <laughs> somehow the sweater didn't fit, like it was too tight. So I wear it now. Uh, and that's why I decided to knit another sweater. And I picked up this design and uh, then I just, you know, I kind of don't, didn't finish it. And now my husband is uh, going to Ireland for a week on a business trip, in, and he uh, like in in a week he, he's flying to Ireland. And I was like, okay, we got a cold, uh, rainy, and you don't have any warm sweater to warm, to wear and to, um, to bring with him. So I was like, and I had like half of the sleeves done and the body was done. So for the uh, Past few days, I'm I'm working on this better to finish it. And today, I joined the sleeve to the body, and I have six days uh, to finish uh, the yoke. So, here's how it looks. It has garter stitch uh, hem, but on the sleeves, on the body, and the yoke is also just garter stitch. Mm, there should be also a garter stitch panel right at the underarms. Uh, but I accidentally <laughs> didn't uh, knit it, and I uh, think it's uh, it's you know it was a good decision, you know, about other decision it was a mistake, because uh, my husband like just likes you know plain looking at things, and I think it would be too much for him to have in garter stitch panel. And I did some modification, uh, modific other modifications. Some of them were, um, you know. On I did on purpose, some of them were accidents, but <laughs> yeah, what, that's what I changed. Uh, the sleeves are narrower, but just I omitted one more increase, so yes, less two stitches than what the pattern calls for. And somewhat, I when I was, you know, joining the in the round, I found out that I have two more stitches at the back than at the front, but it's two stitches, it's like one centimeter. So, no biggie. I leave it as it is. But I think it's a really nice uh, pattern for a like, men's sweater. It's kind of elastic, but. Um, yeah. Like for men who just like plain stuck kind of things, I think this guard the stitch. Um, you know, parts are kind of nice, you know, um, how to say. Today I just can't find my words. It's kind of nice detail that makes it more interesting. What I don't like already about this pattern is that, you know, the cuffs, they are really white. So I, I know I'm a woman, but when you look at that, it's really... It's really wide, but it, I think it's written in the pattern, so I just had, I should have read it more carefully. But I hope this my husband won't mind because he has like a one or two sweaters he bought, and they are like you know, they fit tighter around the wrist. We'll see. And the ah, the, I didn't talk about this yarn and this yarn. This is the same yarn. <laughs> In different colorway, uh, it's a Peruvian high wheel, high length wool from Phil Colonna. I really love to work with this yarn. I knitted several garments with it. It's a uh, worsted to iron weight. It's 100% pure wool. I think it's even really soft. I think it's soft, and it's really affordable. Uh, the brand is called Phil Colonna, and they have really, really a lot of colors to choose from. 
you know, various shades of yellows, pinks, purples, reds. So yeah, I think everyone can choose a color. And it's just really nice yarn to work with. So if you are in, if you need an iron weight yarn and you want it to be pure wool, not scratchy and affordable, I think Peruvian is the way to go. So again, this is how this is, and this colorway is called granite. This is granite. It's kind of you know, really really dark gray, was black. Oh, just granite. Yeah. And this colorway is called. It's either mustard or Dijon, which is basically the same, but they have, I think they have two um, colorways and one is called Dijon. No, 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 this is, not Dijon. This is mustard. This is mustard because I have one Dijon uh, in my stash and it's kind of more brownish mustard color. Dijon and granite. So, wish me luck because I need to finish the yoke in one week and also this one in one week because my husband's going to Ireland and I'm going to the mountains and <laughs> we both in this weather and the last thing I wanted to talk about today is um, just my plans for uh, after I finish this this ones I want to like I already have uh, about three pattern ideas in my mind uh, of them are for sweaters and I want to start with one which is going to be a color work sweater uh, the construction will be raglan and for that I'm going to use this combination of yarns these two are wool local by Erica Knight this is kind of also granite kind of colorway and this one I'm not sure you can really see my scanic Slightly green, yellow, greenish yellowish color. And so nice. It's slightly green. And I wanted to combine this with some like rust red tone, and I wasn't able to find it in this base. Like they do have it. Uh, I think this year they added like a red colorway to this. Um, were local but it was not available in the Czech Republic so uh, I was looking for another yarn with similar you know qualities and characteristics and I found this which is um, from Rosa Poma again so when I was ordering the yarn for the Kastania sweater I ordered uh, this one as well it's called the Gulyal and looks like this it has like from you know from far away it's kind of rusty color and when you look at it uh that kind of it has a lot of pinks yellows browns in it it's kind of it won't see that not sure uh and it's also uh it's um so it's a, I can read for you. The Guya is a breed specific yarn composed of Sierra de Estrela and Portuguese Merino wool. And it's entirely sourced and manufactured in Portugal. It will bloom and soften considerably after being washed. We recommend washing blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's again pure Portuguese wool. And this is how it looks together. I think it's really nice. And uh, so the sweater is going to be raglan sweater. The yoke sleeves and the part of the body will be uh, in this granite black, and then there will be color work. Uh, the background will be this greenish color, and the no the the pattern will be in the red. So if it looks something like this. I think it will be really lovely. And I actually make a chart for this color work but more than half years ago. And I finally will be knitting it, so I'm really um, looking forward to it. And the pattern is based on traditional Russian uh, lace. So I kind of you know, converted the lace to 
a color work. I really think it would be pretty nice. So that's about it. I'm not sure I want to talk about anything else. Hmm. Yeah. So if you have any questions, please uh, comment or you can reach to me on Instagram, Facebook, or through my contact form on my website. And I hope to see you soon. Uh, and um, well, soon it depends on how <laughs> how how fast I knit. I actually have a need to knit a sweater for my for my children, for both of them. And, and for that, I will just use my favorite patterns from uh, um, well, it's a petite knit. Uh, it's a Harald jumper. Uh, I knitted it uh, for my son. Now my daughter's wearing it. It's it's a really really great pattern for children. And then I have um, I don't know how, how the, uh, the designer is called, but her nickname is Strikezilla. Uh, and I also got one pattern from, from her basic raglan sweater for children, but. You know, I just was like, I don't want to do the math and, uh, you know, try to create a design for something which I already have in my library and it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. So I'm, I hope I'm going to, sh uh, I will be able to show you um, those uh, sweaters next time together with my other designs. And um, yeah, that's all for today. Bye.